Um, you know, first and foremost, we're going to give you a little bit background on the project. We don't have plans on this. It's just a condo, two bed, one bath condo in Libertyville. Um, really a cosmetic rehab. So we didn't have to pull, you know, the, the full permits and, and get plans for those. So um, don't have plans to share with you. We'll do the walkthrough of the property. Uh, John can show you around, kind of walk you through what's going on there. Um, the financing type for this property was cash, uh, cash buy. So the, the property itself was bought from cash and then the, the renovation is being funded from cash as well. So again, um, without further ado, uh, I'll let John kind of walk the property. I'll pin you here. So uh, why don't you take it away, John? Walk us through and, and kind of tell us what's going on there at the property. And then we'll uh, we'll go into the, the deal um, analysis after the, the walk through the property. And we can kind of go through questions then as well. All right, Tom, thank you for the warm introduction. I got a freaking bad headache this morning because I'm on a 72 hour fast and I'm on hour 36. Um, so I'm not feeling that good today, but I made it out here all the way to Libertyville. Um, but yeah, this project, I'll give a little bit of background on how I found this project just because uh, I think that's always one of the hardest parts is to figure out how to find the deals and probably the most important part. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I'm always telling anyone and everyone what I'm doing and I'm telling them I'm looking for the most uh, rundown uh, properties I can find. In this specific property, I'm, I'm actually not even looking for properties anymore. Quality Builders is definitely my main focus, um, but this one pretty much fell into my, my lap and um, didn't, you know, couldn't turn it down. I'm in a group called GoBundance, uh, which is just a kind of mastermind group of business real estate guys. And it was um, someone through my GoPod, um, one of another GoBundance member's brother's wife's mom passed away here or not passed away here, but she actually got out of the condo before she passed away. So, uh, but yeah, so, you know, I think most of the best deals come from networking, uh, which is one of the points that Tom touched on is just letting people know what you're doing and what you're looking for. I know that's just the most important thing I've found to do because once I know who to call and, and more importantly, like that they know to call me, um, when they have a good deal, um, it makes everything easier because when the deals are coming to you, you're not having to do the searching. And I know for me, getting going, that was always the hard part is finding a deal. Um, so yeah, this came through networking. I, uh, I actually gave the sellers three different options. Do you, do you have them up there still on your email by chance? But I gave them three different options because I just love giving options to sellers because, you know, my main goal uh, when purchasing a property is really to serve them and help them because um, typically they're in some form of, of distress. Uh, and I just want them to be able to get the most value out of the property. So, you know, I offered a, a cash offer. I offered a uh, price point to kind of partner on the deal. And then I also offered a a uh, to, to list it since I'm a broker as well. So I think I offered uh, 90 cash, uh, which I ended up accepting, I offered 105 as a partnership. And then I told them, you know, maybe we, we would list it at 100 and 120 uh, to 115. Uh, and, you know, then I just kind of left it up to them to kind of make that decision. So um, I've just always found that that makes things the easiest is when you give them, um, you know, the options that are going to benefit them most. Cause some people are going to want the cash, some people, which they ended up wanting the cash and didn't want to deal with it. And then, you know, some people are going to want to get a little bit more cash and partner up. And some people just want to list it and get the highest and best price, which, you know, at the time, and still at the time, like it's definitely more of a, a buyer's market than a seller's market. So, you know, I wasn't confident with the condition of the unit. Uh, it was a smoker's unit and that it was going to kind of get the highest and best price that they would have wanted. So 
that's how I found the deal. Uh, like Tom mentioned, I funded it through cash, uh, which has been a blessing as a curse, as I was telling uh, my partner, Edgar, who gave me a ride here. Uh, because I, I don't quite have as much of the urgency um, to get the project done. So it's been going on a little bit slower. Um, but I also don't have like those hard money costs or investor costs um, nipping me in the butt. Um, so, and, and now it's becoming spring anyway, so it'll be a good time to sell and or um, turn into a short-term or midterm rental. So if there's any other questions about the deal purchase, Tom has a, a sheet we can go through at the end that kind of goes through the numbers. Um, but I'm going to walk the property for you guys now so you can take a look. Uh, also here at the entrance. All right, yeah, so it's it's not a walk-up either. So you actually come in um, from outside the unit. We did a little bit of uh, extra framing. Yeah, we did a little extra framing here um, to frame out this uh, closet here, this pantry here. It wasn't like this before. I think it was all one. And I think I sent you some pictures, Tom, that we might be able to pull up as well. Sure. Um, but sure. then you come into the kitchen. It used to be a very galleyish um, kitchen as well. So if he pulls up those pictures, you'll be able to see. But there was actually walls here and here. So it's kind of very closed off. Now it's a little bit more open. We also thought about opening up this section you know, uh, of the wall. So you'd have cabinets at the top and cabinets on the bottom. Um, but it ended up there's some electrical, you can see it's running through there and we just weren't going to gain, um, that much. Um, but you can see here's the rest of the place. You got my partner, Edgar, you guys need a realtor. He's the man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so pretty small condo, I think 950 square feet. Um, so not very big. And yeah, so we took a couple of walls down here and this is a family room. And yeah, it, was, it wasn't, I wouldn't call it a hoarder house, but it's definitely an older house um, that needed um, quite a bit of love and had quite a bit of stuff to get removed from it. And it still has a pretty kind of mustier smoker type smell so we're you know, still need to get rid of that with some kills paint yeah i can go ahead and share some of those photos that you sent just to give a, a reference yeah go ahead um you can see here these are just some of the before photos so as john mentioned um pretty tight kitchen there um, opened up into the dining room. So we fully gutted that, taking these walls down here, leaving so it's a little more open uh, to the dining room now. Um, you know, definitely a, a building that needed some cosmetic rehabs. Uh, we obviously were able to keep most of the bones out of it, just some minor framing. Um, but, uh, you know, overall, I think this is a, you know, these types of properties are great, easy, easy to kind of flip and do some cosmetics, get the, the new kitchens, baths. Um, here's towards the front so you can kind of see um, kind of that color from the, the smoke, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, definitely something that's tough to get out sometimes. So this, this is now opened up into the kitchen. Like I kind of talked about here. Um, you know, it'll just flow a lot better, um, and, and be a lot more uh, updated. You know, so, so, all right. Anything else you want to show them, John? Um, yeah, I'll just walk the bathroom real quick and in the master bed. This is a mess. So, you know, so this was actually a nice surprise in here because it's a pretty big kitchen or pretty big kitchen, pretty big closet in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also has a washer and dryer uh, hookups. So uh, that's going to be a big positive. But yeah, still a huge kitchen or huge closet for such a small place, which is not too often seen. Yep. And then or here with soffits out uh, here in this bathroom. So we'll go all the way to the ceiling with the tile. Same thing here in the kitchen. Uh, we took the soffits out of there as well. Um, so, yeah, just some little things to make it look quite a bit bigger. Um, even though it's a small condo, it's still going to 
<clears throat> turn out and be a nice product at the end. Um, yeah, so I got any Great. specific questions on the deal. Tom, you can pull up the, the deal check spreadsheet just so yeah. we'll kind of see what the numbers will look like when we go yeah, to sell. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull that up now. John can talk, keep talking through it again. If anyone has any questions, feel free to type them out in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll touch, back, touch base on them uh, after he's done kind of going through this. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I mean, should sh show up, but yeah, it's a 90k purchase. I think we'll be all in between 25 ish on the rehab. Um, holding costs are pretty minimal, um, just because we ended up paying cash, so we don't have any um, hard money loans out. Uh, the main reason for that was when I went to get a hard money loan, the, the amount of points they were charging me, I think, was close to two or two and a half because the purchase price was just so low and that that was what they charged. And, it, you know, it just didn't make sense for me to pay whatever it would be two, 2,000 or two and a half, two, two and a half thousand uh, points or cash, two and a half points, 2,500 in cash to do the deal. So um, I ended up using cash and, like I said before, it put us a little less strain on the completion time, and that way we'll be able to go up by in the spring, which is should be the most active time to put it on the market. And we're up in Libertyville, so super nice area. We just drove through the downtown, so I uh, shouldn't really have a problem selling. And I think it's like a seventeen or eighteen thousand dollar profit is what the deal check shows. Yeah, you had uh, 17, just over 17 here. So, and that's over three to four months. So it's not a bad deal, uh, but for the amount of money invested, it's just, just not much. So, yeah, any questions? Someone. So Ish has a question. Uh, so thanks for putting this together, of course. Um, curious how you think about uh, HOA fees, uh, dealing with HOA for a condo flip. <laughs> Insight to that, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I'd, I stay away from condos at all costs to be uh, completely transparent, The especially in Chicago. Uh, up here, the, these condo docks were so old uh, and the fees were so low. I think it was, I want to say the HOA fee was something like $70 a month or something, just ridiculously inexpensive. And and there was no rules in the HOA about short-term rentals. There was no rules in the HOA about um, renovations, as long as you weren't taking down any of the major walls. So mm -hmm. there just wasn't any kind of red flags from the HOA perspective all the neighbors have been pretty fine with the work we've been doing and it just wasn't a big deal here. Uh, personally though, I always try to stay away from condos in the city. They just end up having, you know, creating more problems. They're harder to sell typically. Uh, and I prefer um, single family house and, and multifamily if I'm working in and around the city. If I do have a condo, you know, I'm looking for something that's different than most you know, that has nice amenities and just needs the kind of cosmetic rehab like we're doing here. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just piggybacking off of that. I know, you know, we've worked at quality builders. We've worked on multiple condos. I think anytime you're buying any property, HOA, a condo, you want to make sure to, um, you know, really dive in and, and look at what the, you know, rules and regulations are for renovations, for rentals uh, as well. You know, some, some of these condos will have regulations where only, you know, maybe a percentage can be um, rented out or, you know, they, they might really be limiting on uh, the work that can be done. Um, so I always double check that before you dive in, um, you know, make sure you get a contractor who um, is on board with it. Any other questions for John? Uh, uh, John, maybe while, maybe while people are thinking about it, if they have anything, you know, we were talking about some of the, the issues you kind of touched on. Um, you know, maybe the sense of urgency on this one was a little lower. Um, you know, if you want to touch on that a little more, I know some of it, you know, I think some of it, you know, when you get deals like this and you know, like your cash, you know, 
maybe you're thinking it's a, a simpler project. You don't maybe go into details with your subcontractors, uh, you know, enough, maybe more handshake deals. You know, what, what can we, what can people do to avoid to make sure that, uh, you know, they don't, they don't fall into that same trap that maybe you did on this one. Uh, yeah, I think just clear, clear expectations are always the most important thing. I think that's one thing we do really well is we set up the contracts um, with all of our clients super well. Um, this specific project uh, rehab was d- done by one of my friends because it was so far north and the expectations just weren't as clear as they probably should have been as well. And, and that ties into another point is like, because it's so far North, you know, uh, up in Libertyville, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Um, you know, it's not really, I'm not really seeing any money coming out or any big issues. Um, it's just, uh, not giving it as much attention as I should. And, you know, that stems from, you know, I probably shouldn't be doing as many, um, outside investments and still continuing to focus more on my business, uh, which is now my primary focus. It's just all these projects, um, you know, take time and, and end up being distractions if it's not your primary focus. You know, I know Bernie, he's a busy man and real estate is his primary focus and being an agent, but uh, yeah, that's all I got as far as kind of lessons learned and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, piggybacking off of that then too, you know, obviously, you know, I, I think in most of these, I preach having a good team. And so, you know, having a, a good contractor who can cover it, especially if you're not near a project, you know, John's not necessarily out in Liberty Bill, so he's not going in to check it daily or even weekly. So, you know, uh, kind of hiring a sub or, or, a, or a contractor who can handle that for you, keep you updated, keep you in the loop without you having to travel uh, to your project, obviously is important. Um, you know, it certainly helps, uh, give you the peace of mind uh, when doing projects like these. Any other questions, anyone? Or John, anything else you'd like to share? Any other insights on, uh, you know, that might be uh, useful for some of these people? I don't think so. Just continue to <clears throat> connect with all the people you can who are doing what you want to do. Sure. Uh, we have uh, another uh, a comment from Rainy. So she said, uh, thank you, very helpful. And she's new into the field and looking for uh, construction. What are our thoughts on rehab for two to three units? Um, I think the more units, the better for us. Yeah. Um, as, as the units increase, the construction actually gets a little bit easier in my opinion. But yeah, I think anywhere two to four units, if you can use a low down payment program, FHA, uh, VA loan, that's probably your best route to getting started for sure. Um, and then if you can use, you know, take advantage of like FHA 203K, build in the rehab, that's by far the, the golden ticket. And it's just obviously a little bit trickier to make those work because you got to have the contractor, the lender and the agent uh, all on the same page to kind of execute that specific product, which uh, can definitely be a challenge. Agreed. Agreed. Anyone, anyone else have any are you, questions? Are you in Chicago, Rainey? Yes, okay, yeah. So, plethora of two to four units in Chicago that will work well. So, And sometimes uh, two unit is actually easier uh, because the if you're doing an FHA loan, it doesn't have to meet the self-sufficiency test. And so I know the first couple of properties I purchased uh, were two units um, because if you're looking at least on the north side of Chicago, it's really hard to find a three or four unit that will meet the self-sufficiency test. Yeah, we've been part of them, some very successful, you know, two unit flips. I think those are those are great. You know, like John said, you can kind of double the scope, you know, if you're you're working on one. Um, it just makes it easier to work on both at the same time. All right, Isha has another question from a construction property enhancement perspective. How do you navigate the increases in property taxes for the, specifically for the city of Chicago? <clears throat> well, I think most people deem property taxes as a very difficult thing to deal with. And it's, 
you know, the way we underwrite you know, a lot of our deals is we know what year our taxes are going to get assessed and we know the approximate increase. So, you know, typically we're forecasting that out. And, you know, if your taxes are increasing, you know, guess what? I mean, your rents are increasing too. And so I just don't think uh, it should be kind of an even playing field um, as you're getting more costs as a landlord, those should trickle down to your tenants. You know, that's just how inflation works in general. That's what we've experienced more than anything over the last couple of years. Uh, yeah, last couple of years, I'd say. And, but you can forecast and every year you should be appealing your taxes. Like there's, you know, attorneys here in Chicago make a killing just on property pack, property tax appeals. And, you know, every one of my properties are appealed every year. Um, they'll do it for like a split where they keep 25% typically, and then you get your 75% of the appeal back. So there's not a year you shouldn't be appealing your taxes when it's when it's your year to be assessed and they're assessed every two years in Cook County. Great, appreciate that. Uh, Mike has another question. Uh, what are your thoughts on buying with an FHA loan? Uh, have you felt like it's less competitive when offering on properties? Or what is your, what's your experience with that? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. I would say, Typically, it is a little less competitive if you're going after the same property that every other buyer is in the market, you know, and if you can get a, if you can use the FHA 203k loan where you're building in a rehab, you know, there's less competition for those properties. And, you know, if you're keen on using using the FHA loan and you're getting bid out by your normal conventional buyer, you know, then I think it's kind of up to your real estate agent to start finding different properties where there's not tons of different offers too. you know, properties have been sitting for a while, properties um, that aren't just brandly new onto the market and, you know, kind of let them find, you know, properties that make more sense. And as an FHA buyer, you should be able to pay a little bit more or be willing to pay a little bit more um, to make your offer stand out more. Is there any other um, methods that you would recommend? Maybe I know, uh, you know, as far as making your offer look a little better, maybe if you are um, going, going that route. Yeah. I mean, you can always put in higher escrow amounts and, uh, I think having the confidence uh, your realtor has is really, really important. Letting them know, um, you know, I'm a broker as well. And anytime I have an FHA loan, I always let them know we've done it before. We have the right people on board. You can also have their lender call um, that we've done sometimes, have their lender call and say, hey, you know, we, we, they, we already have the pre-approval. Everything is good to go. This is our bread and butter type of loan. And just, you know, having the team that you have set up your lender, your uh, agent and your contract. If you have one, if you're doing two or three K all on the same page and just bringing that confidence to the deal, you know, the selling agent always has the most influence on the deal. And so the better your real estate agent is with connecting with that person, uh, the more likely it is that they're going to be able to sell your deal as, as the one to push through. Sure. That makes sense. Anyone else have any questions for John? We're still here. Uh, so we got plenty of time, a little bit quicker uh, walk through today. So happy to keep answering questions if you have them. A minute to chime in if they have anything. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, I still got this headache, so I want to get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> fair enough. No, that's fair. Well, we appreciate uh, you joining us, John. Obviously, um, always very helpful uh, to give some insight on the the buying um, uh, aspects as well. You know, I, I think mostly we focus on the, the renovations and construction. So this is great to kind of give a, another side of it. Um, you know, I do want to tell everyone, uh, you know, if you ever have any questions more for John or for quality builders, you know, we are always available. I'm going to share. Um, Share some QR codes right now. So 
this is how you can contact us. You can find us on Instagram, our website. Um, if you do want a direct consultation with us where you can meet with uh, John and kind of go through um, a specific property or just kind of a strategy that you might have, um, you know, like John has been mentioning, um, it's always important to have a great team in place. Uh, and here at Quality Builders, you know, we think we have a lot to offer as far as uh, the general contracting side of it, as well as some of our connections as well. So always happy to help out uh, when possible. I would love if you guys could uh, follow us on our socials. You got our Instagram there. You can find us on Facebook, uh, TikTok, and LinkedIn as well. Um, you know, would love to follow. Uh, love to share this with your friends. You know, we do this once a month, first Saturday of the month. So we'll be doing it again uh, early May. Uh, we'll be going through one of our other properties and kind of going through the rehab and kind of our lessons learned on that as well. So um, again, I just want to say I really appreciate everyone being here today on your Saturday morning. Um, look forward to seeing you again next month and, and hope you all have a good rest of your weekend.